Since I just finished implementing the slur in music jotter, we need to have a discussion around what a slur in music actually is. If you ever looked at a piece of sheet music, you probably saw something like this. And this. Curves everywhere. But what do they really mean? Well, I've challenged seven composers to help us answer this question, and Beethoven also decided to chime in, and he's going to give us a few words of his wisdom. So by the end of this video, the musical slur will make a lot more sense. Music is more than just the tones that you hear. Dynamics and articulations play a major role of the mood of a musical composition, and the slur is actually a type of articulation. So to help you understand articulations before we get to the slur, let's quickly go over some common articulations that we see in music, such as staccato, legato, and accents. Each of these articulations affects how a single note is to be played. For example, the staccato will significantly decrease the duration of your note, while the legato will increase the duration of your note. And an accent is a sudden increase in volume or emphasis of a specific note. So here's an example of how I use accents at the ending of one of my piano compositions. These accents are used to bring out the melody, which is shared between the left and the right hand. So if I did not use accents, the melody just would not be distinguished and the musical message would just have been lost. So what exactly is a slur in music then? So this is a little tricky because the slur has different meanings depending on your instrumentation, but Beethoven just couldn't help himself. And he wanted me to show you an example using his famous fifth symphony. Figures. All right, so first let's take a look at bowed string instruments. This would be the violin, cello, viola, and double bass. And the slur would indicate to play these notes in a single bow stroke. And when it comes to woodwinds, such as the flute, oboe, clarinet, and the bassoon, the slur would indicate to play these notes in a single breath. But if you look at the first three pages of Beethoven's fifth, you're not going to see a single slur. Also, I don't want you to confuse these ties for slurs. A tie simply extends the duration of a note, and you can easily pick out a tie if the notes have the same pitch. But what does it mean to not have any slurs? So let's take a look at the first two measures of this symphony. All of these string instruments play these four notes with four bow strokes. And then you can see this lonely clarinet over here. It plays these four notes with four separate breaths. Now, if these notes were slurred, these four notes would be performed with either a single bow stroke or a single breath. Now, let me take you to the melody portion of this symphony where we are introduced to the slur. So you're going to notice that these groups of notes have a curve over them. And this is not a tie since the curve extends over the other notes and it's also not connected to any note of the same pitch. You can tell that there's a very smooth and flowing sound and we owe it to the slur for this musical texture. We can also argue that the slur is a great way to demonstrate a melody. So in this case, the performers can clearly see the melodic lines of the second part of the symphony. I want to quickly remind you that Music Jotter is a professional music notation software that I'm currently developing. So if you want to learn more about this technology, 
you can join my mailing list which I'm going to put in the description below. Also, I'm big on promoting compositions from both amateur and professional composers on this channel to help demonstrate my points. So please consider liking this video and subscribing to this channel if you want to see more of this type of content. I'm going to kick this video off with an early keyboard instrument, which is the clavichord. It's a highly articulated instrument, which just means that it's much more difficult to produce sustained notes. Therefore, the slur is extremely rare in this style of musical writing. However, I couldn't pass up the chance to demonstrate an original William Byrd style piece composed and performed by Gaspard from Young Composers. He actually made use of the slur in this Renaissance style piece specifically for this challenge. And the slur in this case would be used to simply group notes together. So let's listen to this short piece and admire the beauty of this handwritten score. This Nocturne by Daniel for piano will be our next example where we demonstrate how the slur can be used for keyboard instruments such as the piano. A slur would indicate pressing the note on the piano and then right as you play the next note you release the previous key. So I just want to give you an example of this. Here's an example of a slurred note. Now here's an example of non-slurred notes. Now getting back to Daniel's Nocturne, his use of slurs in the score is actually quite minimal and explains that the reasoning behind this is to avoid cluttering the score. So instead he uses the word legato to portray connecting the notes. But I did find an example where Daniel uses the slur in this Nocturne so let's take a look at that. Not only does this slur indicate phrasing or grouping of notes, but it helps blend the notes together. Now we're going to look at Henry's second movement to his piano sonata number two. So this is a good example where slurs can be used for phrasing. A phrase is a musical thought or an idea or put more simply, it's a group of related notes. 
And the first thing that I want to point out are these groups of fours. If you look closely, each group starts with an accented note. And the accented note combined with the slur really brings emphasis to each group. So let's see how that sounds. And if you take a look at these sections right here, you're going to notice groups of twos. So you can hear the emphasis of these groups of twos while Henry performs this in presto. But if I were to slow this down, this is the technique that's used to play these groups of twos with a slur. Now let me play these groups of twos without a slur so you can hear the difference. So now I'm going to play more of this piece until we get to the last section where I want to point something out to you. At this section right here, you can see that Henry is slurring these notes in threes. You, you can clearly hear the emphasis of the threes right here. So the problem that Henry's solving is that he wants to keep the same rhythm of the 16th notes in, in this 2-4 time, but at the same time, he wants to emphasize these threes. So in order to solve this problem, Henry just makes use of the slur. It's an easy hack while keeping this piece rhythmically simple, rather than using triplets. This next example is going to demonstrate how a solo cello makes use of the slur in this composition and performance by ECC from Young Composers. This performance actually gives you a very clear picture as to how the slur in a bowed instrument differs from a slur in a keyboard instrument. And just as a reminder, when playing the cello, the slurred notes instruct the performer to play the notes in one bow stroke. So I want to take a look at this passage here, where we have slurs that span over a rest. So what this means is that there is one single bow stroke between these two notes, despite the rest in between. Now, if you were to take a look at these 16th notes, you can clearly hear how each note is played with a separate bow stroke, and the musical texture is just different. Now, I want you to compare that to these slurred notes. All 
of these notes that you hear are played with a single bow stroke. So that's why when defining the slur, we often say that the notes sound very connected. So as I play through more examples, pay very close attention to the slurs. point out that slurs and woodwinds are actually quite similar in technique, where the performer would instead play notes with a single breath. My next example of slurs will be specific to the guitar. And in guitar playing, there are two methods to play a slur. So we have the hammer-on and the pull-off. And the hammer-on just means that you change pitch of a string that has already been picked by pressing onto the fret. So Expert 21 from Young Composers shows us the hammer-on. So take note of his ring finger pressing onto the fret to change the pitch of the picked string. And the pull-off is the opposite of a hammer-on. So when the player takes a finger off of the fret of an already picked string, the pitch will also be changed. So you can now watch Expert 21's pinky finger pull off from the fret to change the pitch. So we are essentially using one picked note to create two notes. So let's see how that looks in sheet music now. Expert 21 submitted his piece for guitar for demonstration purposes. So you're going to notice that the non-slurred notes of this guitar piece are separately picked notes. Whereas the slurred notes don't require a string to be picked, but instead they rely on the already picked note with either a hammer on or a pull off. Let's now talk about how slurs can be used in your vocals. So I have a really great example here, which was composed and sung by Vince for our 2023 Young Composers Christmas event. And you're probably wondering why I have a picture of a dog here. This song is actually about Vince's dog losing his favorite candy cane toy. And Vince has to do everything possible in order to find this candy cane <laughs> at all costs. So now a slur in a vocal simply means that you can change pitch of a note on the first syllable of the word. I don't have the sheet music for this example, but when we get to the slur, I'm gonna point it out and play it back for you. There's only one crusty candy cane. I need to find out where it went. But I still need it now. It's not under the couch or by the Christmas tree. Maybe it was taken far outside again. Left out in the cold with all the muddy snow. I don't know, but as I pass the kitchen, I find my nostrils are reacting pretty viciously. And could it be? If you listen closely to the lyric, could. You're going to notice that it's only one syllable, but the pitch changes within this syllable, and this is what a slur in a voice is. Ho, ho, holy sh and finally, it's right there by the chair now. now, the word finally is not slurred because even though Vince changes pitch in this word, it's not within just one syllable. So pay 
close attention. Inside my bedroom, his ears perk up. As I give him back his favorite toy, and he finds peace, comfort, and joy. He finds peace, comfort, and joy. And the most obvious slur here is actually the very last word of this song. And the word joy is one syllable, but you can hear Vince changing pitch within that one syllable. So that's a perfect example of how to use a slur in vocal music. These next two submissions are from Peter. So first let's take a look at his gavotte and C. And a gavotte is a French dance. So let me direct you towards the pizzicato section where the solo violin comes in with the melody. And I'm demonstrating this part because it's easier to hear the simulated slurs. So you can tell where the performer is intended to play the slurs, where the notes sound much more connected. And the rest of the orchestra actually is performing pizzicato, where there is a clear disconnect between each note being played. When notes have time to breathe like this, and we clearly hear the next note being played, we say that this note is being articulated. And with this next piece by Peter, this is a piece that's meant to convey the story of the tortoise and the hare. So this is a good example of how to use a slur in a woodwind instrument. When the bassoon opens with the melody, which represents the tortoise, you can clearly hear the performer slurring their notes. So what this means is one breath will equal multiple notes. And a non-slurred note would mean one breath per note. So I want to point out this clever section of the piece where the hare is taking a nap. So you can hear how the tempo has increased, which represents how the tortoise is trying to hurry up. So I haven't spoken too much about glissandos on this channel yet, but a glissando is another form of slurring notes. So when you play multiple notes in succession like this, which represents the hair falling asleep, this is essentially one breath being used to create this smooth sounding musical texture. And the notes being played here are being played chromatically. You probably know by now that I'm big on using examples to prove my points. Slurs in music are everywhere, but maybe they were a mystery to some of you. While slurs may be rare in a Renaissance style work, Gaspard shows us that the slur can still be used for the sole purpose of grouping together notes. While Daniel was clever with his nocturne, as he demonstrates to us that sometimes less is more. He used the word legato, and that not only helped keep his score clean and organized, but it got the job done. Henry, on the other hand, made use of slurs specifically for phrasing in his music. He even simulated the feel of triplets with 16th notes by slurring his notes into threes. PCC demonstrates to us the up and down bow versus the slurred notes in succession on the cello. And Expert 21 shows us what a hammer on and hammer off is. And did you even know that vocals could make use of the slur? Well, Vince's hilarious crusty candy cane shows you that you can. And let's not forget Peter's solo violin being played against a staccato orchestra. Peter also demonstrates that woodwinds can be slurred as well, where one breath can play multiple notes, such as in this bassoon. And the more extreme flute glissando representing the lazy hair also represents the slur. So now you know that the slur has multiple meanings depending on the instrument, but in the simplest terms, 
the slur in music really just means to connect your notes the best you can. So if you enjoyed this challenge video, you really have to watch this video next, where I challenge five composers to show us what makes a good melody. And if you want to learn what makes a good music composition, check this one out too. I'll see you next time.